Okay, I thought we would have a look at adjusting a pen because it's been a while since I did a, a type of fine tuning video. Um, this is the professor's drawing of a walnut, but um, this pen I got from a viewer, which is very nice. He already told me, you know, it's not very expensive. Um, but the problem is that it's it's very scratchy. Just just listen to this. So I want to change that. Now one of the problems is that uh, the nib is so sharp, it is so scratchy that if you have a look at this, uh, you may see that paper residue collects at the end of the nib tipping. You see that? So, there's a couple of things we're going to have to do. Now, first of all, I don't know this pen. I don't know how easy it is to work on. Um, but let's just find out together so that I can, I can show you the, the, the process I go through here. Now, I've, I've, I've um, acquired a couple of, of, of tools here. These are brass shims, 0 0.002 and 0 0.01 of an inch. I'm going to have some micro mesh. This is from andersonpens.net. They, they sell you a nice um, assortment of, of fairly uh, relatively rough micro mesh and very fine micro mesh, which is all great. And I'm going to use that for smoothing the pen. Now, um, I like I, I kind of like to keep the pen inked so that you get some lubrication, but also so that you can try it out a lot. And the, the process is going to be fairly simple. I want to floss the nib tines because if I get paper residue here, this pen's been used, then it's it's fairly plausible that there's going to be more paper residue in there. Um, and then I want to smooth out the nib. Now, to get out some paper residue, you could in principle leave the feed and nib in the section, but I would very much like to see if I can get them out. That means I'm going to get ink on my fingers because the pen was inked up. But that's okay. I mean, you can always clean your fingers. Um, I'm going to grab some grippy material here. Um, I'm going to hold the section. I'm going to grab the nib and feed. And there we go. That was very easy. Don't try to twist it. Try to pull it out straight first. If nothing happens, you can carefully try to twist it. But by twisting it, you can also warp or bend a, um, a feed. So you probably want to try and avoid that. First thing I'm going to do now, I don't know how well this pen has been cleaned in the past, but I'm just going to, it, it, I mean, it, it looks like it's pretty clean, but I'm just going to throw that into a little glass container of water, um, and I'm just going to dip the nib in there, and to make my fingers not suffer too much, I'm going to use a pair of pliers, no, not pliers, pincers, I like this type, I got a pair of four pincers for I think about two or three euros, this really sucks, it's very soft, metal you can bend it with your fingers um, point made um, but that's okay um, be, that what I like about this is that these this is the type of pincers they probably have a name but they snap shut when you let go right unlike other pincers that you have to uh, squeeze shut so you just grab your nib yes your nib your nib and it's it's just in there and you can just easily throw that around a bit and once you are done, uh, you fish it out if you can. Now I got a feed there that's also nice, it has to dry too. Uh, and I got my nib, and you see these are just beautifully cheap pincers that always work, except when I want them to work. <sighs> Alright, that's it then. Slippery nib, there we go. I take an ink cloth and I'm going to wipe that off. So this is dry. Now I'm going to take my loop. It's always good to get loopy. And I'm going to see how we're doing. Yes, the first thing I want to see, I'm just, I, I can't really show you, but I'm holding it to the light. And I see that a beam of light passes up to the nib and then the two tines touch. And I like them to just not touch. So that's the first part. I'm not sure if you can see that if I hold this up here. Um, you can sort of see that, so you see that nice, you see a nice little gap, and that ends there where the tines meet. I'd like that to be a bit bigger. Good thing is, I don't really see a lot of paper residue in there, but I'm going to do some flossing all the same. Um, I'm going to start with 
0.002 inch shims. I'm just grabbing one from my little pocket. This one has been used before, but that's fine. You slide it in through the breather hole, and then you just slide it through a couple of times. And this is tight, very tight to get through. Now what I like is a nib and feed setting where the tips just barely hold the shim and now it really is squeezed shut in there so I'm going to work a bit on that uh, one way to do it is to just keep running the shim through the tines uh, that is a safe method but it's also a method that takes time if you want to speed up the process a bit you can sort of put the shim in there put your fingers there put your thumb there and then gently push to one side and push to the other side have to be careful, don't overdo it. Um, by doing that kind of stuff, of course, you're risking the chance of time misalignment, but that makes things a little bit faster. But for me, right now, that is not really fast enough, and you can still see that there is a lot of friction, um, so I want that to, to go just a little bit slower, and I still don't like how tight this is in there. Now I take a 0.01 inch shim, um, This is in that bag, but this is not a 0.001 inch shim that was misplaced. Yes, you really feel the difference. Um, this is 0.01. Very, very flexible, very soft, whereas this is much harder. Okay, so I'm going to run that through, see what I whether I can do that. Uh, that's very difficult. Yes, so I want to open this up. How am I going to do that? Well, this is a very simple trick. I've shown you that before, but I'm going to show it to you again. If you take some type of hard object, this this barrel is going to do just fine. I'm going to take the nib, I'm going to put that on the barrel, and then I'm going to be... So imagine this is the barrel, right? I'm going to push the nib up like that. Not too far, but just a little bit. Now, every nib has a different, is made of different you know, material, different springiness. So you start slow. One, two three, four, five, I was like five seconds. I'm going to take my 0.002 inch shim. I'm going to run it through. Or maybe it's a little bit easier, but not a whole lot. I'm going to hold up my nib to the light again. I see that there's still not a clear gap all the way to the end of the nib. That means I can be just a little bit more aggressive. Apply a bit more pressure. One, two, three, four, five of those of you who are interested in, in seeing this. Um, you see I'm really opening up the tines there a bit. You see that? Okay. Let's oh, zoom in a bit more. There we go. Okay. I'm going to check it again. And now we're getting somewhere because I have opened up the tines all the way. Hold this. Maybe, maybe that will make it a little bit easier to see. I don't know. Um, focus. See that there's just a little gap between the two tines at the end of the tipping. Well, that's what I like because that gives me a somewhat proper, more better, better, more proper. I meant inflow. Now I'm checking out the tines. The tipping is fine, the alignment seems okay, although there is a little bit of an issue where, you see that, that's not good. So I'm going to have to try and work on that. That's probably part of the, um, the scratchiness. Which is very pronounced as you can hear. Now what I'm going to do is assemble the pen again. I'm going to put the nib back into the section because I can align the tines here but once I put them on the feed and I push it back into the section it might just be the case that the section sort of alters 
the way the, 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 the pressure that's exerted on the nib, right? And then my perfectly done realignment might be nullified. Okay, so here we go, back into the section, that was easy. Uh, I have another look, and I see that, again, the tines are just not aligned properly. Seem to be slightly warped too, which is kind of strange. I just slide my shim between that. First, see if I can. There we go. I like that a, little, a bit better. I'm just going to check this out with my own eyes, if you don't mind. It's a little easier to see than on the camera. Well, we're getting somewhere because the alignment is already a bit better. So that's what I meant. You put it into the section and that alignment seems a bit better. Now, I don't see any huge... I'm sorry for not showing you this. It's a little hard, but I have to see this for myself. The alignment seems to be okay. One tie now is not much higher than the other. No, I think this is going to be a matter of smoothing. Okay, so then we smooth. That's fine. It doesn't seem like there's particular burrs or anything. Um, so, I'm just going to take my finest grit of micro mesh, which is 12,000. I'm going to add water to it. That extends the life of your mesh. And I'm going to put the section back into the barrel. You know what, before I do that, I'm going to slide that cartridge back in so that I can immediately try out what I'm doing. It's always good to try and see what you are doing. Of course, you will get ink in the water, but that's okay. Okay, you see I just do a couple of figures, eight and infinity signs then I take my paper, which I actually threw off my desk, but I have reclaimed it. It's already smoother, but you can still hear that it's quite scratchy. Now, some nibs just do that, they're just noisier. This shouldn't really matter because I don't write at this angle. I like to hold the pen under the angle that I, I, I write with, right? Because that's the part that is giving me scratch while I write. Maybe someone else would hold it higher and they would feel no scratch at all. It's a very subjective thing. Okay. already much better. I can feel that the amount of resistance that I'm experiencing on the micro mesh is really getting smaller and smaller with every stroke. Um, which is good, that means that you really are getting somewhere. You still feel it, but I think you're going to remain feeling this nib. And right now, these upstrokes, which are extremely scratchy and they cut into the paper, are a lot better. So the final thing I'm going to do, that was the main issue, these diagonal upstrokes. That's what I'm going to be focusing on. So I just run the pen along 
the micro mesh. Until I feel that that particular stroke is getting smoother. Obviously, you have to make sure that the tines are aligned well before you do that, otherwise you can keep smoothing it. Uh, but you're, the, the, the misalignment of the tines is going to create a scratch on the paper. I still hear it, but it no longer digs into the paper. And I think I have significantly improved the writing performance of this pen. It's probably never going to be the smooth, the world's smoothest nib, but it's it's really nice. Now, one final thing I'd like to point out: you have to be very careful when you do this bending trick. That right here, uh, what happened to my loop? The loop is gone. Interesting. Um, oh, here we go. You have to be careful about uh, where, where, where am I? You don't like to focus, do you? Oh, I zoomed in a bit too far. That bit, the nib, right there, has to fit tightly against the section. If you lift it up too much by bending the nib upwards too much, then ink flow is going to be ruined and you get hard start skipping, no ink flow at all. So make sure that when you bend it, you don't overdo it. You don't want the tips to really look like that because then it's likely to, you have a gap between the feed and the nib. This is okay. Okay, so be careful if you don't get any ink flow and you've done this trick. Then be careful, you may have overdone the, um, the, the pushing it upwards. And as you can see, the nib doesn't really point upwards now, right? It's the, 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 you don't want the nib to point upwards, you just want to apply pressure so that the tines open up a bit. If you splay them, it won't write. If you lift them up from the feed, it won't write. So be careful. I have a whole video on that. Um, it's called Making a Nib Wetter in Seconds. Um, that's pretty much it. So be careful, go slow, check your results often and you should be fine, and I think that's, uh, that's pretty much all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.